welcome to the Diablo Podcast. We are online at DiabloPodcast.com. I am the host, Flux, and I am joined this week by Eliminator. Mush, mush. And a new guest, a first-time guest, Bladelaw. Hey, everybody. Bladelaw, you are a podcast veteran, I understand, not for Diablo, but for other games. Uh, back in the day, um, my ex-girlfriend, Actras, who some of you might know, she's a minor internet celebrity, uh, we had a Star Wars Galaxies podcast back in the day, and uh, it was a lot of fun. We did it for a few years. Uh, if anybody recognizes me from that, I'll be shocked, and uh, I, uh, I'm looking forward to talking about Diablo, because this game, uh, I've been you know, I've been a huge fan for at least 10 years now. You know, started gaming at four years old, and as soon as Diablo One came out, it instantly became my favorite. So I'm really looking forward to uh, to the new game coming out. And you've been a big fan of the Diablo website that I work on forever and ever. And you said this is your <laughs> lifetime dream to be on the podcast. You know, uh, just just pretend. Well, yes, I, I want to pay some deference to to my host here, but uh, <laughs> back uh, my well, nobody else got, does. He got, uh, he got, you're, you're an eliminator. <laughs> pay deference to your host. He's like, oh hell no. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I don't, I don't want to bite the hand that feeds here, but uh, my brother was a beta tester on D2 beta, and uh, I remember getting a lot of info on Diablo2.net when I was at work in the office, and then when release came for D2 Classic, I remember selling unID'd rares on eBay, and if you remember, when that first started, um, I, was, I, I was making hundreds of dollars from that. Um, just farming all night for these unID'd rares that could have been something really special back then. Um, and it very quickly dropped off, and pretty soon they were $10 and then a few dollars, and then it was over pretty shortly after that. Um, and then, you know, I really enjoyed it as as the game evolved over the next few years and the expansion came out. But, you know, as far as, as this new game, I, I think of the Diablo series, I think of the camps as political parties. Um, so as such, coming from you know, really old school with this, I'd consider myself ultra right-wing conservative with respect to staying true to what made the first two games really great. Yeah, well, I got some bad news for you. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been watching the game's progression? <laughs> so would you would you care to share your entire history of playing Diablo Eliminator just to keep up with the Joneses? Uh, I think I explained it one time on, on here once about how the very first PC game I ever owned was Diablo 1. I had just gotten my uh, college PC, and a friend of my brother's came over with a copy of Diablo 1 saying to me, uh, this is going to be your first game you ever buy. And I was like, yeah, right, whatever. Because I didn't really believe much of what he said. And uh, lo and behold, it was the first game I ever bought for PC. The second game he brought over that he said it was going to, uh, yeah, that flopped. That was like Might and Magic Heroes 1 or something like that. <laughs> Me, my brother, and one of my close friends, we would play basically eight-hour shifts on Diablo 1, where it would almost be like, you know, manning the missile silo button, where every eight hours one of us would get up and the other one would take over and the one who was who left either got something to eat or went to bed or something take care of the other bodily functions that need to be taken care of some uh, people have been, have been doing that with the Diablo 3 beta and that is my big segue there okay uh, you you've just gotten your first chance at Diablo 3 ever i guess played law right with uh, the beta had you played it before at BlizzCon or anything uh, i did play the demo at the um the BlizzCon when they released the monk i forget which one that was 2009. But, yeah. They didn't have PvP at the time, so I, I didn't actually get to try that. But uh, I really enjoyed the, the bit of the Act 2 campaign that I got to try there. Just got into the beta uh, a few weeks ago with the big, massive uh, flu- influx uh, of new players. So how does it compare? You played it briefly in 09, and that was Act 2, and a little more of advanced level of the game. Probably not as much polish and everything. And now you've finally gotten into the beta, and it's new and different and exciting or it's just what you expected man i have a lot to say about this Uh, (laughs) first thing the intro screen i missed the campfire i really liked the the context that it set that you know these uh these heroes these adventurers are they're they're hanging out and you're going to pick one and they're going to go and they're going to represent you i felt like the general lack of context of just kind of seeing your 3d model um it, it didn't really put me in, in the game like the, like the last game did. Um, I thought the animations were really cool. 
I wasn't sure why I was dumped into Tristram. I, like, what is he doing there? There's there's no explanation of how he got there. Maybe this is going to play out in some intro cinematic or in the yes, full game. Yes, it will. Okay. There's a little brief intro cinematic that sets up. They they showed us that. I mean, they showed us recent, recently. They released it with Kane and the meteor and stuff. Well, I thought they said something about there being something for each individual character too, a little something. Yes, that's also true. There's a yeah. brief, like a one minute kind of a little story background of each character. Which is apparently done in that kind of that 2D comic book, you know, Book of Cain come to life style is what it looks like, mm. or so we've been told. No one's actually seen them yet. They saw a brief excerpt of that at the event at Blizzard last August. I was told of the I think it was a Demon Hunter they saw some of, but there will be a little more story. But just I'm posting these people's first beta impressions lately on the website, and one I haven't posted yet. He just goes on and on about what you just said. The opening cinematic, I mean, on the opening you know character selection screen. And, you know, there's no campfire. You only see your one character. You don't even see their name, really. You just kind of see your battle tag. And mm-hmm. just the ambiance of it, did, he did not feel was welcoming. And so I'm really hoping this is just sort of the beta version, and we're going to get, you know, the beta version. Haha. <laughs> we're going to get the full game version, which will be more, you know, fire, you know, sitting around the campfire and give you more of a sense of joining a world instead of picking a character off of some computerized screen. Yeah. How, did, what do you think about that eliminator? Did you see any? I mean, we're kind of used to what the opening character selection is now, but I mean, if you look at it from you know kind of a wider view, does it seem un- inappropriate in some ways? In certain aspects, I could see the point of not setting you in the world in a place. I think it would be cool if they had some sort of campfire type selection screen too. But I mean, it's such a it's such a minor detail to me. I mean, I just want to it, it. What you're in there for like. Maybe a third of a second before you're actually in the game. So I agree with the limiter. The gameplay is king, and luckily, once you get in there, the gameplay I found it was really excellent. Um, graphics, animation, sound design, really. I think they really knocked it out of the park. So I give a lot of credit to to the developers for that. That being said, uh, I found it a little hokey. I was surprised. I thought it would feel a little darker. I, I understand that the unicorns and rainbows controversy that we had, I think there might be a little bit of truth to that. It might have been a little overblown. But, you know, the innkeeper, for example, he throws out a one-liner after you, you kill the undead that are turning out of a B-movie. And, you know, I, I found little kitschy stuff like that. I, I wasn't sure if it made sense given the, the history of this franchise. I understand they're a little more lighthearted, uh, these days in in Irvine compared to Blizzard North. But, uh, you know, that being said, I I really enjoyed the gameplay. Another thing I noticed pretty quick is, God, everything is cranked to 11 in this game. If you've ever seen Spinal Tap, it's like the the amp goes past 10. It's like there's so much happening. There's uh, It's almost like a complete lack of subtlety. The moon physics on the Barbarian, um, the explosions left and right. And this is all at level one. you know, starting off with a basic attack, I think, really sets a nice pacing to the game. And when you, you have these fists of lightning from level one, I, it just felt like a little much to me. So much flashy flash on the screen. It, it level, by the time I got to level eight, um, I can't imagine this thing going any higher without looking like a train wreck. I think to feel epic, Blizzard really needs to let us earn it. Um, otherwise, players aren't going to appreciate it. Or respect the game world. It could be toned down a little bit, maybe giving us uh, a slower intro to the special effects. Like I, I had uh, been thinking about the rune stones and the changes that they were saying they're going to might uh, they're going to implement. And I was thinking, well, you know what might be a good idea is to actually completely remove rune stones from normal and only have it in nightmare and above difficulty. And that's a long time with just the same spells, though. You're but there's no skill gain- levels either, though. Yeah, but you're always gaining new skills as you're going up through level 1 to 30, so you're always kind of getting something new. Yeah, till the dead zone. So I thought to myself, well, that would be a good relief for the dead zone. As far as, like, graphically, you get you get kind of used to it real fast after you play for a while. I don't really mind it now that I've played it for so long. If I don't see... Uh, corpse go 50 feet flying up into the air after I smash it with <laughs> with uh, one of my barbarian skills, uh, I kind of get disappointed. But do you think, like what Blade Law said, do you think you get an Act 3 and Act 4 and then you know you get the higher level skills, is there going to be uh, is it going to keep scaling up and improving and feeling more and more powerful or are they plateauing too soon? I mean, can't really tell. 
until we actually... Well, yeah, obviously, it's, it's a hypothetical. <laughs> it's, it's all hypothetical. That's why you get the big bucks yeah. to be on the podcast. That's right. You, you can project. Maybe a little bit. Maybe you will lose a little bit of uh, grandiose from the higher level spells because of your lower level skills are so powerful. But I think the actual effect of the skill will even out the deadening of your senses from the earlier levels. You think it's awesome and it will just get awesomer. You think they'll be able to pull that off. Oh, maybe that's just me hoping. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do a lot of that around here. Projecting my hopes and dreams, but uh, I hope so, yeah. Yeah, we're going to get a little more into the the casual, friendly, and um, you know, easing people into it or not stuff later in, in, later, later in this podcast. I have a lot to say about what you just said, but I'll, I'll hold off for this moment. Uh, I played some of the classes. I, I held off on uh, the Witch Doctor for now. I just want to save at least one of them for release. But as far as the others, I found the Demon Hunter to be the closest thing to balanced. And if people are complaining on the boards that the Demon Hunter is underpowered, it's not... Com- comparatively the, uh, speaking, I guess. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the others, they're face-rollingly overpowered. I mean... The Demon Hunter, I feel a little bit mortal when I play the guy. The others, they just laser beam through through the game like like it's nothing. Literally, in, in the Wizard's case. So, uh, you know, I don't know if, it, if they want to tone things down. I know their philosophy is to bring everything else up to to the awesome level that uh, that the others currently are. We'll, we'll see what they do. But that combined with the, the hit point, uh, massive pools, and um, the monster AI... Uh, Decked, decked out in full crafted blues by level eight. I mean, I, I just think they need to leave. Well, now we're getting into the, that other conversation. But um. the problem with the hit points is it's too much too soon. I think they could kind of tone it back a little bit. But I got to tell you, I've been playing. I played one playthrough yesterday of a uh, naked run with a barbarian, and one playthrough with a just a normal what would be like kind of like a fresh run with a barbarian. I had to use different skills because it was the the game demanded it with, you know, not being able to do more damage. With so you the, did one barbarian with equipment and one without basically. Yeah, basically. one only one barbarian only had the axe that you start with. I even took off the shield. And the other barbarian I just equipped it like I would normally equip. I actually still had chal- challenge with the unequipped barbarian when i got to leoric though there wasn't as much of a challenge it was kind of funny because i was like wow these i had a pack of unique unburied that had teleport (laughs) and for the barbarian it was pretty rough because i i you know you only have the three skills at time so i was basically trying to hit run hit run ground stomp hit run hit run ground stomp but the problem was they would teleport closer and hit me so I died quite a few times trying to get past that area. Um, I also never, I don't pick up the henchman because the henchman it kind of runs on a completely different set of uh, powers and his the scaling, Templar, you mean? Yeah, the, the yeah the Templar. His his damage he does pretty damn good damage without any extra stuff. A lot more than what you do with that, with your stinky starting weapon. Yeah, but you would never have a starting weapon by the time you got to the Templar if you weren't doing it intentionally True. naked, though. Yeah, so. yeah. And what I found was kind of funny about this new build was the fact that you can intentionally get weapons that actually do less than what your starting weapon is. So if you wanted to handicap yourself even more, you could. Yeah, like the starting crossbow for the Demon Hunter is 3.0 damage, and you'll find like cracked one-handers that are like 2.4 and 2.6 and stuff. Yeah, I found one. And they, t- and they shoot slower, too. Yeah, so. I found one t- uh, yesterday that was 1.5 or something like that. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if I can... I want to try playing a Demon Hunter now with this bow. Because- <laughs> you, can get one, you can get one point critical hits. <laughs> because, uh, you know, it's... When you try to do naked runs with the, with the casters, it's not the same. Because their abilities um, provide them the means of keeping their distance. Even though their damage scales up with weapons, in theory. Yeah, but they they still have that instant advantage of, well, I don't have to get close to do damage, and that means I don't have to get within archer range, which is the bane of the barbarian's existence, is those damn archers. Because when you jump into the pack of the shield bearers, and then you're stuck in the middle of them, and then the archers are shooting you from the outside, and you're like, uh, eight seconds, too long... 
dying. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that'll be nerfed for the next patch, so no worries. <laughs> the amount of guys that they've added has is a definite positive. Like there's like bigger packs, more of them. The health situation with gear is just like he said, face rolling. You know, <laughs> you just it's not even much of a challenge at all. I mean, I I did intentionally today when I was playing the geared barbarian. I just sat there and let some unburied, which are, I think, the, the hardest-hitting creatures in the game, outside of possibly getting hit with Leoric's special three-swing move yeah. attack. And I just sat there like, okay, can I kill them without drinking a potion or without like trying to run away or without anything? And they actually did actually kill me. And I was wearing gear normally. I wasn't, I wasn't buying, I wasn't crafting, though, but I was bo- just picking up stuff. You had no thorn stuff on, obviously. Or they would have no. all been dead. Yeah, <laughs> they would all have died from thorn stuff. When you when you got killed, were you playing in four player games or was it solo? It was solo. All all my gameplay experience, except for one time with the witch doctor, has been solo. So, any uh, first time experiences you've had, Blade Law? Any interesting character tidbits? Or you said you're saving the witch doctor for later, but who do you? Who's your favorite? Well, I like the demon hunter because the game felt a little more like a game and less like a flashy flash, um, you know, walkthrough that you can, yeah, less like a God mode walkthrough. Yeah. (laughs) Do you Uh, want a limiter's 1.5 damage bow? Maybe he'll trade it to you. Yeah. I'll trade it to you if you want. (laughs) Yeah. I've got a, I've got a 2.2, uh, club. If you want to try that one too good, (laughs) (laughs) too much damage. It needs to be nerfed. I'm seeing a new meta game developing here. How to gimp yourself in the hardest possible way. Yeah, there's no cursed items in Diablo 3. It's not Diablo 1 again, but yeah. you can definitely get stuff that does less damage than, than barehanded, oddly enough. You know, I was disappointed, and not not recently, but there's no true sword and shield class in this game. We had the paladin, and he, he generally didn't act like much of a paladin with respect to how his gameplay worked, but I really like the idea of you know, the Diablo game, you've got all these cool weapons, and yeah, the Barbarian can use them, but, you know, he's more of a two-handed or, you know, dual-wield kind of kind of guy. And uh, Yeah, when you don't have skills, when you don't have real skills that take advantage of the weapons or the items, there's no real reason incentive. to say that they're... Yeah, incentive to actually use yeah. them outside of, oh, maybe I might do, take a little less damage, but obviously, you know, yeah. in in the normal, you don't really need to take less damage unless you're gimping yourself like like I've been doing. Right. Yeah. So for for an expansion, would love to see a shield focused character. I think for hardcore, it'd be really cool too. I wonder they made it so accessible with weapon types. You know, there were initially a lot more limitations on weapon types in Diablo three and all these things you couldn't use. Especially for the monk, and now of course he just doesn't have animations to use any weapons, even though he can equip every damn thing in the game. <laughs> but I mean, as you mentioned with Diablo 2, I mean, you know, demon hunters have to use bows or crossbows, and you know, you get a little bonus with like this with the daggers with witch doctors, and with the uh, wands with wizards, and there's some barbarian specific stuff. But you know, and you look at like Diablo 2, the barbarian had all these weapon masteries that were specific weapon types. And before there were respects, that was, you know, that was, your, your character was, was locked into that forever. You know, you couldn't switch from pole arms to spears or, or swords or anything. And you wonder if Diablo 2, I mean, we, you know, this is a debate we've had forever. If you have any sense of ownership of your own ownership of your characters in D3 and not having to make any permanent character choices. This is something you mentioned in your notes, Blade Law. You know, no stat points you're assigning and, you know, the respects are very easy. If we're going to have the sense of identity and, you know, does your character yeah. actually do anything or can they just, are they totally changeable in, in every situation well let's go there um you know what, what saddens me the most overall about the development of d3 is how the development team has taken the teeth out of the diablo series as a player in this world my hand is being held so tightly as they walk me along this path for fear allegedly that i might fail or that i might die or I might misunderstand or not understand something. And for what? For a catering to a mythical casual audience. And I say mythical because I have never met a casual Diablo player. Have either of you ever met a casual Diablo player? Bashiach's mom. <laughs> you actually met her though? When Bashiach's mom is not you know, farming loot, uh, Diablo players are obsessed. They're possessed. 
casuals as an industry insider or analyst for games will tell you they're by and large stay-at-home moms who play games like Farmville, Angry Birds, maybe a little Mario Kart racing. Do you really think these women are going to pick up a mature title called Diablo? I just don't see it happening. There was an article on IGN not too long ago about how um, what is it, uh, Dragon Age. There was a, I think, 50 or 60 percent of the people never finished the game. It was a sign of how the old school, not going to ha- hold your hand, not going to uh, help you in any way, actually turned a lot of casual gamers, people that just have maybe an hour or so a day just to be able to play a game and not want to feel frustrated by the game or not want to feel... They want to just be able to go around and smack things and enjoy themselves. How they, They're they not going to stick around if they feel that they're not going to be able to achieve their little one hour of pleasure. But my question, and that's a fair point, but I wonder the the direction of catering to casuals, why why is that being done when this franchise was built with core gamers? And In core different gamers, industry, different time. I just, you got to think I, about it. It's, it's, I don't it's see a far aesthetic. different time frame than what we used to be. We used to be in a time frame when game people who played games were kind of looked at as outsiders, uh, socially inept, um, and people that just would play the games to escape reality and spend as much time as possible inside of them. And now it's it's more looked at as something that you're supposed to be able to jump in and jump out whenever you feel it and not feel pressured by it because there's enough pressures in the w- real world. That is what normal is. That is the personification of what they've wanted to achieve with normal. It is not anything indicative of what uh, hell and inferno are going to be like. Or so they claim. Or so they claim. But, you know, you can kind of see it a little bit when you play Naked Runs. A little bit, not not fully, because you can still, you can. There's so much. Uh, it's so low level at the time, and there's not a v- very v- much variety for the for the monsters and stuff like that. And the monsters are kind of toned down purposefully, but you can kind of guess. Well, I could see how the progression curve could go with it. Let me ask you this: Why do you think that Diablo is being given this treatment, and StarCraft Two? is the pinnacle hardcore RTS for the most competitive gamers in the world. Same company, same, uh, you know, they need to make money, but why are they doing this to Diablo and not to all of their franchises? Got two words for you. South Korea. <laughs> or, yeah, I, don't think you, I don't think you can really dumb down an RTS. I mean, it has strategy in the in the acronym. So I, I'll tell you what, though. The... the Normal mode in in uh, StarCraft 2 is immensely easy. I never felt challenged really at all in the normal mode of of StarCraft 2. Uh, in when you as soon as you bump up that level, you get maybe to the third or fourth board, and then you say, "Okay, it's starting to get a little challenging here." You know, it, it's it's not just Diablo. They've been doing it. Sure. With, with all of them. It, it, at least StarCraft II has a single-player campaign mode, whereas um, you know, once you get into the multiplayer StarCraft II environment, at least the, the core game, it's not a friendly place. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's designed around hardcore competition, and if you're coming in as a new person or any sort of casual, um, you're not going to be uh, greeted with a smile. And it seems well, like they're really intent on doing that with Diablo. Look, the reason Diablo II thrived for 10 years is because they created a really dangerous, competitive, exciting place, especially for hardcore. I mean, you have to respect the world like that. And in this world, nothing can really hurt you. And like you said, normal. Okay, we're, we're in normal. They, maybe they plan that for the future. I, I have a strong suspicion that this new era, I don't know, it, I think maybe Inferno is going to be like uh, maybe a raid in WoW. I mean, how do we really know how hard it's going to be once we figure the game out? You know, my, I would get so excited playing D2 because there might there might be a PK on the other side of the portal, or the bail drop might go to somebody who clicked a little faster than me. And I, I think that competition 
really made it exciting. Good gear really meant something. Um, we didn't have an auction house where players could just pay cash for it and, uh, you know, and win that way. You have to really earn it through the way you play the game and the information that you get about it. And I think people, they got into pindle botting and they got into bail runs, not because it was flawed as a game, but because we loved the game so much and people just wanted more of it. Um, people aren't going to take the risk and the time to get into those activities if the core game isn't really excellent. It kind of sounds like more of a position of fear of the outcome than a position of what r- might really happen. It's like you're f- possibly more afraid of it being like that than it actually being like that. I'm really afraid because I really care about the game. <laughs> I, yeah, I understand that. I do too, but you know, I kind of have maybe a little more faith that they'll they won't make it to the point where it's unplayable past the first year when you're just like, yeah, whatever. I think really interesting things happen when you let players play the way that they want to. Um, you know, we ha- it was really interesting. It really just captured my imagination in the early days of Diablo Classic when PKKs came out to, to chase down the PKs, you know, to protect people in, in these big games. I, that was so cool. Like, and that just can't happen anymore. Is it really happening that now, though? In Diablo because, too. No, I mean, obviously it changed over the years, <laughs> but you know, at the time, it, it was just, you have really interesting social dynamics that come about by giving players more freedom, and I feel like the focus on hand-holding is, is really taking away from that. Well, I think Blizzard is tar- trying to get both. They want to have their cake and eat it, too. You know, they have all the very casual stuff to welcome new people in, kind of the same thing with StarCraft. You know, the single-player mode is fairly easy on low difficulty, and then if you really get into it, you start playing multiplayer and you get your ass handed to you. You know, we have Diablo 3, where it's very easy and normal and keeps getting easier every every patch, apparently. You know, the whole, like, Fisher-Price world now, where you just, like as Limiter said, you have to just sit there and wait, and eventually you can die, but it kind of takes effort. But then, you know, they keep saying, you know, you get to, in Hell and Inferno difficulty, it's super hard. And, of course, there's PvP, which is going to be, you know, very ruthless and very min-maxing dominated and really skill-based. And whether or not, they, they just assume that people like us will put up with all of the easy crap on normal and zoom through it. Whereas, you know, the Farmville players will enjoy normal and think, wow, this is really cool. And maybe they'll turn hardcore and play more. Maybe they won't. And I can't wait to spend a minute defending Blizzard. <laughs> Uh-oh, we're going to ruin your image. Bastiok's brainwash you with his, his clever tweets. <laughs> Bastiok's got a hard job, man. I don't envy him. They just recently released that video showing their Q&A guys talking about how, how, how hard Inferno is, which was first shown at BlizzCon last year. And they're going on and on about how it's so super hard and you can wipe for an hour on the same boss. And uh, are, you, are you buying that Blade Law? You seemed a little dubious no. about the ultimate. <laughs> no, I'm not buying it. With the recent change with the hit points, one statement that they had made back in BlizzCon during that uh, little thing is not going to be true, is the one-shot deal. That one of them said, you can be if you don't watch out, you can be one-shot. And well, obviously, they could just quadruple monster damage as well as hit points, in theory. Then what's the point of raising the hit points in the first place, then? To make it normal and very easy so all the Facebook players won't mind. Oh, okay. I thought it was because they needed to increase the difference. Well, let's hope it's both. Yeah. I'm shocked they still have hardcore in the game at this point with with all the other concessions that have been made. I'm happy, don't get me wrong. In my opinion, it's it's the only way to play this game. Oh, God, you're one of those guys. I think that's why they're (laughs) making us play through normal again before you can start hardcore. Just so, just so you know, Grandma from you know Farmville won't accidentally won't click it. Accidentally, and... yeah. Just like you can't have online and offline because they don't want you to accidentally click it and then wonder why you can't play online with the offline character. So moving on to a little bit different topic: uh, release date delayed again. Surprise, dismay, acceptance, disappointment. Did you? Were you what were you surprised? Did you, you really know. think it was going to be out like March 27th or something? Look, I mean, this is par for the Blizzard course, right? We, we've been through this with, with every release. I think Blizzard course is always a bogey, actually. <laughs> there are a lot of pars on the release date course. It's a miniature golf course that has, like, a giant windmill in front of the in front of your uh, hole-in-one. And it keeps knocking back the ball. Yeah. If this was a you know project managed at uh, you know, any other company, it, it, this wouldn't be acceptable. It's, uh, you know, Blizzard can do what they want, and, you know, more power to them. I'd, we'd rather have a great game then uh, that's the reason we care about this. That's the reason we're having this conversation and we're on this podcast right now is because because they make great games, they have a great track record. Um, 
the same time, you know, they're the only ones who, who can get away with this and have the fans still be as loyal. I think so another company would have to like fire their executive producer over a delay. Or f- <clears throat> oh wait. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait. I think I think it was pretty obvious that it wasn't going to make the March date as soon as early like February passed. That was last week, dude. Yeah, well, I mean before that though. You know, like <laughs> like first, like February the other 1st. Earlier February? Okay, like February sorry. 1st when as soon as February came around and they hadn't had made any announcement about it you pretty much knew that if the two month the uh, hype up advertisement window is not going to be made to make a, a march 30th release date if you can cast your mind back to last summer they were saying beta test pretty soon they had that big event press event in august 1st i think it was no it was actually in july but the nda lifted august 1st mm. and that, that that they were like this is a beta preview beta very soon we're gonna have a short beta test we're really we're really shooting for the 2011 release and then what was it like in October maybe or November they we got that Mike Morheim letter, you know, which which you know with the infamous early 2012 prediction. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of us, you know, we we were hoping for 2011, and then well Mike Morheim said 2012 early. They wouldn't they wouldn't just say that and not make it. This isn't Blizzard. Oh wait, it is Blizzard. <laughs> it is Blizzard. And now we're looking at you know second quarter, and I don't you know it's not going to come out like April 11th. You know they're not going to miss first quarter and make second quarter both you know a week and a half into it. You know it's going to be like mid May I think at the soonest. Yeah. And knowing them, it's probably going to be like June 37th. So. <laughs> the- is that like leap year plus one? <laughs> yes, it's only, it's, it's, a, it's only the Blizzard calendar. Yeah. <laughs> 36 and a half. To me. Yeah. So do you guys have a prediction? When do you, do you think we're going to see this? Is it going to make the second quarter? I'm going to say it's going to make second quarter. Did you think it was going to make first quarter? Mm, back in December. Did, back <laughs> <laughs> okay, well now it's February. Now you think it's going to make second quarter. Are we going to be having this conversation again in August? Probably, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Blade Law? Um, I, you know, being that we're up for a major revision of skills and runestones, uh, still hasn't hit the beta yet. Uh, I don't see how it's possible. I, look, I love Mike Morham. I, I don't believe a word the guy says. I think he means well, but you know, it, it, these things are, they just never happen when they say they will. And it doesn't feel like the time I hate to, to be a downer, but it doesn't feel like it's, it's there yet, uh, to my, to my intuition. Well, we have no idea how long the changes to the skills have been in. They've probably already been in the... Well, they said that they were in the game. Yeah, they've been testing them for a while. Yeah. They've been, I mean, well, a, lot, yeah, a lot of things have been in the game for four years, and they're still not ready either, though. <laughs> like the bookshelves. Um, anyway. <laughs> I was talking to Azure today on, on Instant Messenger, and he was like... Remember back in 2010 when they said the game was content complete and they were just polishing it? <laughs> that was a year and a half ago. <laughs> That's a lot of polishing, dude. Yeah, but then they kind of backtracked on that and didn't say that they've been like contradictory statements about it being completely finished and they're not not totally in the polished stage yet. I mean, certain aspects of the game are probably polished beyond any game's wildest dreams. Just the the feel of the combat. No matter how many times I played the game, when I and I think to myself, oh, I have played this so much, and that's it's really gotten kind of boring and I step away for a couple of days and then I come back. I'm like, I, I just sit there and I keep playing it. Let me ask you this. Do you think, I mean, all right, for example, Epic death animations. I, I, I don't know if you covered this flux in the other that part. That was the but, next topic I had on oh, the line. So go right ahead. I was going to ask, would you rather the game come out, um, you know, sooner or would you rather wait and, and get things theoretically like that um, added into the game? For me, I, I could, I would like the death animations. But really, I could deal without them being in the game. Well, that's that's good because they're not. <laughs> exactly. Happy me, happy day. Well, I play hardcore, so I was never going to die anyway. So that was irrelevant to me. But <laughs> I have too many skills yeah. for that. You would never see one, of course. Well, I mean, on the internet and stuff. The same place I see naked women, but you know, in real life, I would stay away from it. Oh wait. <laughs> I don't understand how they showed us that. What four years ago? Two thousand eight was it? Yeah, June June 2008 was the demo, and that was the they showed. But that was videos. never really in the game, though. That was somebody in the back pressing buttons and making it happen. It wasn't like it was actually something that was ever really there. On so its at own. no point in the last 42 months they could have worked that in at anywhere. I'm, I'm going to respectfully disagree. It, it was there. I saw it. We all saw it, and it made us really, really want to play the game. Whether it was somebody keen commands or not, it doesn't matter to me. 
I don't understand how in four years it wasn't on a spreadsheet saying, hey, we should do this and get it. That's why I say it seems like poor project management to me. And <clears throat> yeah, fired. that's why someone got fired. <laughs> <laughs> that's why their executive producer just uh, took a leave of absence last week. On to bigger and better things. I mean, countries have had revolutions. Children have been born and since this time. I mean, you can't get a few animations coded into the game. I don't understand that. Yeah, but they didn't have to rework the town portal system in Syria, so that, was a, <laughs> that saved them a lot of time on overthrowing their government and, you know, chasing Gaddafi down like a dog in the street, which was not in Syria, but close enough. So one of one of the other things, if you remember from that, that video with Siegebreaker, was the one who bit off the barbarian's head, and he also picked up a witch, witch doctor and spiked him. He didn't actually bite him, because I guess those masks probably don't taste very good. Mm. But there was a scene earlier in that where they were with the NPCs in a dungeon and Siege Baker reached through a wall and like snatched up one of the archers, right? Yeah. That was a big dramatic moment. I'm kind of assuming, I'm wondering if that's the same thing as the fatalities. Like that's a scripted event and it's not really actually in the game. It was just something they put in that demo. Probably just like the traps, that trap with the, the barbarian and the witch doctor when it ran up on the shaman. Yeah. That go- goat man shaman. Goat man shaman. Yeah. And they, they both got frozen in place. And then the two other, barbarians and witch doctors came up and saved them. I wonder what percentage of that video, you know, if you went through and put like the 15 coolest things in that first 2008 video, mm. what percent are never not in the game now or never were? <laughs> Is there a little bait and switch going on here? Maybe there was a bit back then. I mean, we kind of all assumed what was in that video was going to be in the game, if not already, then very soon. And apparently a lot of that was just really giant, cool concepts that yeah, they worked out in coding. List. But they weren't really functional yet, so it's the stuff that made it. This game looks awesome. To this game is awesome. You want to rephrase that? <laughs> <laughs> you, would you have to elaborate on that point, Blade Law? I mean, I hope it's good. I, I hope they get it right. I really do. You played um, World of Warcraft, Blade Law? Sure. And you play at Eliminator? I haven't played in a while, but yes, I have a long you did. storied history. The taint, the taint still sticks sticks to you like a <laughs> like a skunk. You can't wash off. Yep. Not even, even with the tomato juice. Tomato juice, yeah. <laughs> so one of the things I haven't played it, but one of the things that looks kind of funny Did to me about anything? that about it and lots of other games is that there's these little parties of humanoids going against like you know 800 foot tall dragons and stuff. Mm. And on some level, you can kind of see okay, the wizard shooting spells, etc. But then you, you know you zoom way in, like you know the, the you know the view will be a mile in the sky, and it zooms down, and there's this like toenail high, you know whatever the tank, what's it, what's the tank character in WoW? Warriors or something? Warrior, yeah. And he's like they're pounding away on the foot on the left forefoot of a of a you know a forty story dragon, mm. or, or pounding way on or pounding way on air. Yeah. He's just close enough to to be in the the monster's hit box. And I, I'm I'm going to segue this to Diablo three in a second, but does that ever seem weird or like suspension of disbelief to you, or it just like come on, he would just step on him. That's why I don't play WoW much. <laughs> there are those times when you'd be like, this is just kind of funny that that um beating on this guy's toe but <laughs> once you get past it once you do suspend susp- have that little bit of suspension of belief or disbelief it, it's a, it's a, it seems of... like a like an orgy of lights and flashes and then you get some loot and press buttons i don't know it, it depends on where you're standing if you're standing like that warrior is you you don't see nothing but the toe <laughs> it's not much of a flashing lights or anything you just watch your health bar and, your and, ho- and hope somebody heals your ass. And well, that's, the aggro up you're just sitting there. You're just sitting there doing your uh, series of attacks. Press one, press two, press one, press five, press one, and then you're like, heal, heal. That's that's the basic mantra of the tank. Yeah. And is that worth fifteen bucks a month to you? Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> But my my point with this is that the Diablo games have been a little more, you know, life size. I mean, the monsters are bigger than you to some extent. You know, Duriel was pretty large and stuff, but it wasn't, you know, this grotesquely, you know, absurdly. Why don't you just step on them? You know, you weren't like a mouse tanking a Doberman Pinscher or something. And mm-hmm. yet in Diablo three, we're kind of, you know, it seems like we're getting bigger monsters. We haven't seen the big stuff, you know. But I mean, Asmodan was pretty big, and we saw that. You know, in that video of Asmodan, there's a few of the marching dudes in the army that are, you know, building-sized. And, and obviously, they, Siegebreaker was pretty damn big. And yeah. they said the Siegebreaker wasn't even the biggest thing that you fight. It, it's There's a lot to do with this genre, I feel like, because it, this, oh, this whole top-down action RPG genre hasn't really gotten 
the same love as the MMO market. We've, you know, MMOs, they haven't really changed a whole lot since EverQuest. It's been refined and made more user-friendly. The core gameplay is pretty much the same. Um, Diablo, what do we have? Titan's Quest, um, Dungeon Siege. There's been a few that were decent. Diablo is still the best, and uh, there's still so much they could do. And bigger monsters, definitely is something I think long overdue for, for this genre. So you obviously don't have any any issues with the realism. I mean, obviously realism is kind of a sticky subject in a world where you're you know you're shooting fireballs and healing with a touch of a potion and stuff. But... Some people some people argue tooth and nail that it's not realistic enough though. Yeah, speaking of tooth and nail, that's all you can reach on some of these monsters. So yeah. I kind of like the fatalities and the whole part where Siegebreaker reaches through the wall and grabs the guy. Mm. Because even if they don't do it all the time, at least I hope not for hardcore players, but at least it gives you some sense occasionally. Okay, this is what would actually happen here. He'll pick you up and just throw you down like a dog. Yeah. A very small dog. They would really need a Kratos God of War-esque um, gameplay mechanic, I think, to really get around their neck and start chopping away at them. Yeah, we don't appear to have any of that. But I mean, I, one of the I just I hadn't really thought about that that whole feature until we they mentioned that the you know the fatalities were out, and now it just seems like you know you're gonna have your normal death animation when you know the the 600 foot tall Diablo squashes you with his fireball, and you just go eh and fall over sideways. Like you should be obliterated, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. maybe you might have some of the effects done to you, like you know getting electrocuted or getting fire or. or... One time, I, when I was playing the Naked Run, and I did a leap attack with the Barbarian, and I landed and died at the same time, and my body went flying 50... Instead of other things going flying after they did, I went flying like a backlash of the residual energy from the, the leap attack. I went flying 50 feet up into the air. That's that is something cool. cool about the PvP, is that the corpses get ragdolled all over the place. Yeah. So you can be dead and the fight continues on and you're you're bouncing off walls and flying off the edge of the screen. I don't really remember in the PvP if there was anything like freezing another player and then if you get a crit on them while they're frozen, will they explode into little chunks of frozen bits like they do in the normal game? I think there were some I vaporization think... deaths when I played it in 2010. Yeah, I think there was. I, I just It's been so long now and such a blur, it's a little blur. Of, yeah, of, of deaths and combat that that <laughs> game was. <laughs> you know, I have a, I think they're really going to blow out PvP at some point. I, it, the potential just to do such cool stuff with that is, is there. I can't wait to see what they oh, potentially they, they do. Have the, they had to have caught wind at BlizzCon mm. with a majority of people that we've talked to said that the PvP was probably the best thing at the show. Yeah, if they're smart, they're, they'll definitely take that and uh, and run with it. Maybe an expansion. They'll have finally have time to work on that. Yeah. I mean, Bastiak tweeted just today or last night saying, "Yeah, we're we're just starting to get into Inferno testing now," which makes you kind of wonder about the video they were showing at BlizzCon, you know, eight months ago about how they were dying in Inferno if they weren't even testing mm -hmm. it properly yet. But but I'm sure that was all very true, and they wouldn't just you know show us stuff to get our hopes up. But, you know, I mean, Diablo 2 essentially was unbalanced past normal. They just kind of, you know, they just, they just tweaked the numbers in the spreadsheets and said, hey, we'll make everything, you know, 50% harder or whatever. Yeah, Diablo 2 is not really a great example of balancing after normal. And they're still obviously working on items, you know, and skills and skill rooms are still going undergoing changes. So it's just there's a lot of, I guess they need to get a lot of other stuff locked in before they can change, you know, items and the last, very last things they do. A difficulty level, obviously, is very dependent upon every other system in the game. Now, would you rather them just release the game or try to get those things right? I think they're doing both. I think they're, they're just going to, at some point, you just got to say good enough and we'll patch this anyway. Yeah. You know, I remember Diablo 2 when it came out, The Barbarian was so overpowered with whirlwind you would just clear the room and they fixed it and people got really upset and they said look the skill <laughs> was broken and players really cried and whined about that um, like that one was... guy who posted on the forums that stand up and don't don't give in to the people uh the fans uh, outcries to change yeah. things stand by your masterpiece 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, he didn't play. Obviously, he didn't play much of uh, Diablo 2's Barbarian or the up the other classes, and saw the Barbarian just go do 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 whirlwind, clear the board. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're gonna be in for a lot of that during release. Yeah, and I posted news on that and said Blizzard's usually pretty good about not just following the popular call. And then about 20 people said World of Warcraft. Whichever whichever class forum bitches the most gets a big buff every patch. So they were. <laughs> I mean, this is not my opinion, but many people pointed out and argued that Blizzard does very much bend to the will of the fans on whatever is bad. That's, and... that's what I've kind of felt, thought was funny is that somebody would say that they don't because they've been doing this for years, trying to appease the fans. If they, Heck, if they didn't listen to the fans, I bet this game would have been out already. <laughs> <laughs> but would it have been just as good? Town Portal wouldn't have been as good. <laughs> it's exactly back to what it was in the first place. I kind of wish they kept it as the Stone of Recall as a name, and then just called what you some what you created the Town Portal. Agree. Okay, guys, we've gone almost an hour here. Any uh, exciting beta hopes or thoughts for the next anytime soon? We're obviously looking for the whole new skill system coming in and whatever runestones have turned into. Well, we're probably not we're not going to get to play with around with the runestones, but well, yeah, but they said the skill system is going to be in the beta. So, I mean, can you envision what? I don't really have any strong sense of what major changes the skill system might need other than some tweaks. Same here. I can't really understand what a major revision would even look like. Which makes me think that maybe Azura has a good point with his whole, you know, it's not going to be items with runestones anymore. And there have to be some sort of integration of the two systems into the one thing. And you'll just specialize skills to get the different runestone effects in yeah. some way. I, I kind of like that idea because of the fact that... Uh, it will give your character a sense of identity if you're forced, not really forced, but pushed towards you want to use this skill and you want to keep using this skill because then you're going to get access to more runestones, more runestone powers, and more runestone effects. So that way people will be like, oh, well, you know, my wizard is predominantly a uh, disintegrate wizard. I'm going to go out on a limb make a prediction that we are definitely going to see a return of customization in some way, shape, or form. There's no way that they can possibly put this game out with weapon damage and the weapon being the be-all, end-all um, you know, end of what determines how strong you are, ultimately. There's got to be something, whether it's skill points, whether it's, um, you know, I, I think that Runes, they might not be runes, but there has to be some item game related to weapons to consider that casters aren't using weapons like uh, melee characters are. So I, I will welcome it with open arms and customization for the win, baby. And we can all make retrospective posts collecting all those comments that Jay Wilson and Bashiak made in the past about how you don't want this and it's not a good feature. Yeah, as always. And it, Customization is no good. It locks you into a build. It's no fun. You should have respects. And then, you know, two years later, hey, look, customization. It's them trying to do something that they thought would make it better, and that not. And then after years of play testing the game, coming to realize that it's not really much better. I guess you have to give them credit for trying new stuff and not just sticking to it and saying, hey, we tried this and it didn't really work that well, so we're trying something else. But it's just, if it didn't take them, you know, if we weren't all waiting for four and a half years for this stupid game to come out, or 11 and a half years, depending on when you started counting, <laughs> it would be a little easier to tolerate, you know, than where everyone's waiting and pissed off about missing release dates, and it's like, hey, the new system is just what we had two and a half years ago. Uh, no worries. Can we also just petition for a reskin of Diablo 1? I mean, that'd yeah. be nice. Internet petitions always accomplish a lot, so that'd be great. We'd get right on that. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby Cote is quaking in his little gold space boots right now. <laughs> Okay, guys, any, any last comments here? I, I want to see um, Bobby's gold-plated guest mansion um, bathroom toilet seat as a unique item. <laughs> how, about a, how about a helmet called just Bobby's eyes? And... Now, see, torch, see, now, see if Torchlight, if they were really smart asses there, Max and Eric could you know, put in you know, the Bobby's eyes helmet or something, and it's you know, plus every... 5,000 to gold find or something. <laughs> or just every everything that drops turns to gold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like the Midas touch. Yeah. And, you, and you starve to death and die because you can't eat. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys, I guess we can wrap it up on that that note. Which <laughs> You've been listening to the Diablo Podcast, and we are online at DiabloPodcast.com. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Uncle. Uncle? Uncle. Uncle. Has anybody gotten their girlfriend to, sh to say that in sex yet? <laughs> oh, you have a leaf <laughs> fetish? You have a, in a head mock? You have a Leah fetish? <laughs> now, 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 when, when I, when I enter the room, go, Uncle. No? <laughs> no. Okay, it's just me then. All right, guys, thanks for your time. <laughs> thanks, folks. Uh, and thanks, I'll folks. talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. All right, later. See ya.